Hello and welcome to Stampscapes Friday Night Live. We're going to be doing Rainforest Reflections here, a card that is based on a half page piece of paper. So I have a piece of uh, eight and a half by five and a half inch semi gloss cardstock, and it'll be reflected into a piece of silver, eight and a half by five and a half inches piece of silver kind of reflective cardstock. <laughs> Sorry about that exposure issue right there. But those will be formatted into a folded card, eight and a half by 11. And I just use a piece of black cardstock, but you can use any color you want. But if you use anything less than um, black, um, with whatever cardstock you're using, put a line of uh, black ink right here in the crease. I would just do that with your standard, you know, Sharpie pe type of pen and put that right in there so that when you merge these two pieces together, you won't have this white space in between there. And that kind of gets, you know, it, it, it kind of gets rid of the illusion or it lessens the illusion of this area down here as being a reflected pond type of uh, format here. Okay, so forest up here, reflected down in this lower section right in here. Hello, Bugs! How are you? Okay, so I want to do this uh, top portion in a real kind of plush green type of um, setting. So, um, I don't want it to be a really super vibrant green, but I'm thinking about kind of a muted but still very rich um, setting. And I'm going to be doing that around the mossy trunks here, um, both large and small. But then I was just organizing my stamps here and I thought, I, I might use my little figure down here and have her be the kind of focal point of this um, composition. And so that kind of changed, uh, you know, a lot of things because if you put a person into a setting like that, they're really going to be the focal point of the scene. So um, uh, that changed a little bit of um, what um, I was just generally thinking of, just in terms of trees in here. We're going to have a much stronger kind of a visual narrative going on. Hello, Linda. Okay, so. Uh, this top portion, I'm going to have this kind of dark and murkier. I want this to be like a real plush, like rainforest type of setting. But, you know, until I kind of get it going here, you never really know what it's going to look like because uh, things change as you see um, something develop. Okay, so grass texture. I'm just doing this in black. Um... Like I said, I want this to be fairly dark here. I'm going to do this on a little bit of a slope just to kind of keep this, uh, or try to establish a little bit more of a, oh, kind of a variation right down here in terms of the water bank. You can go, you know, straight across like that if you want to. And I'm using the, uh, the grass texture here, which will be a little bit more of a, <clears throat> kind of a larger, type of for, uh, texture in combination with the sedge filler. But you can just use this, you know, just the straight sedge filler if you want to as well and build up your whole um, grassy bank here. And that would be fine too. Hello, CM Hawkins and Laura. How are you? All right. <clears throat> These two blend together and stack very well, but... There's going to be so much blending in here, shadow creations and everything like that. So you don't have to get it perfect. You know, you can have things running into each other. You can have hard edges. I would try to avoid doing that type of thing, though, you know, because it just makes our life much easier if you don't have to blend that in like that. So when I'm using this right here, I'm kind of using center pressuring on it. I'm not going with a hard edge like that, giving this uh, textural stamp like a real hard you know, perimeter impression. That goes for any kind of textural stamps. Water textures, clouds, or anything like that. Any type of filler stamp. Okay, so I've established that right there. Now that I'm putting this figure in here, I'm going to plop her down into that grass. And then we're going to layer the trees right behind her. Okay, so I'm going to put her off. 
I have this little figure here in both kind of a left and right, you know, kind of gaze, but I'm gonna put her on this right side, right side lower area so that she'll reflect. Right side lower, because anything in this lower region right here is going to reflect down in this water area down here, um, much easier than having something like really high. Okay, so let's get her stamped out. This is grass right here, and I want her to appear as though she is sitting in the grass. So anytime you do put something in any type of textural element, water, grasses, whatever, you one of the things, little tricks you can do is just, you can just dab off some of the ink off the lower portion of them, if it was an animal, off their legs, hooves, whatever. Um, and however much you take off is going to really represent how deep that grass is. Okay, so I'm not trying to take off all of the ink, although you could. And I want her hands, I'm not going to wipe off anything off her hands because, you know, that's kind of a prominent kind of focal point within a figure. Um, so I'll put her about right. So I'm going to have to mask her off when I stamp those trees out. I always kind of dread doing that. Sometimes one of the things I did um, in a previous video was I just stamped out all the background. Then I just stamped her on a separate piece of paper and just plopped her in there, you know, because she's an easy cutout right here in terms of the shape. And that's another thing you can do too if you don't want to have to bother, you know, kind of masking off something like that and then stamping, you know, things in back. If it's an easy cutout, why not? Hello, Ginger, and hello, Craft by Cat. All right, so she is in there, and I'm going to put my first layer of trees in here, and I'm going to stamp some additional. I'm going to see what that looks like, and I'll we'll stamp out some additional grass, and then we'll go with some additional um, trees up top. Okay, now one of the things I usually don't like to do on reflection cards, because I like a lot more contrast up in this upper area, to be reflected in the lower area. So I try not to clutter too much of that top portion, but I want this one to be kind of dense. I mean, that, that looks kind of cool just as is. We can put like a sky up here and that would be really cool in this composition. What was that artist with that woman kind of, she's not in this position right here. Wyeth, right? We can put like a little cabin or a bar or house up top here. I think that I'm gonna have to do that <laughs> now that I look at that. But anyways, let's layer this one right here and uh, get some greenery in here. Okay, so this tree is gonna go right back in here. Like about like so, I'm gonna have her kind of leaning up against this trunk right here, okay? Masking magic, you can keep the stamp, you can keep the mask with the stamp and not have to redo it. That's a great idea. Masking magic, what is that? Some is that some sort of uh like thing that you paint on or something like that? I have no idea, but when I read that, that sounds like something like that. Is it dry or something like that? And it's like a you know, something that you just peel off or something like that. It sounds like frisk to me but a reusable frisk, which would be really cool, like a paint-on frisk. Okay. So see, I'm not gonna put her, like, leaning up against this center one because then I would have to mask off more of it, okay? So I'm just gonna go like this right here, about like so and then I'll plop this right here. And then I'll use another one over here. Okay, let's see. Uh, by the way, I'm just using just standard dye-based ink on this um, semi-gloss cardstock. You don't have to get this mass down perfect too. If there's like some space in between the figure and the tree, you can just fill it in with some additional um, 
you know, colored pencil or whatever you're using to color in the, uh, the scene with. Okay, let's add in some additional trees. You know, I want to push this back a little bit and do this in a lighter tone. But I think I want to keep it fairly dark again, just for contrast against this lower section. So let's just go with straight black. I could use this black and then stamp it off once and then use it on here. And that would look like it's farther back in the distance. But this is a reflection card, so sometimes um, I don't stamp my upper portion right here like I would if this was just going to be a composition unto itself, you know, without, you know, without the reflected area. All right. Let's see. I'm going to stamp this one a little bit lower here and... That will represent uh, these trees being a little bit closer. I think I want to have some, I might have some light beams coming through here. So I wanted something a little bit closer right here. I mean, if it's up here too, that's fine. Um, you can do it really whatever you want. I'm just kind of winging it here and kind of making these design choices just on the fly. It's not like one thing's the way to go. And, you know, if you do something a different way, it's, you know, wrong or anything like that. Or less than, it could, you know, just something different. Okay. Oops. See, I didn't press hard enough right there. I need a little bit more cushion under here. I only have like two pieces of paper. I usually have a stack of uh, blotter paper. All right. Just scrap paper. Stuff that I've you know, copied and it's just a toss away. I use that for scrap. You entered some un some unauthorized alphabets, huh? <laughs> it's a type of paper that you stamp on and peel the back off. Oh, okay. That's cool, Laura. I know a lot of people use, um, when people d use unmounted stamps like this, I've seen where, you know, if you're storing it in like those plastic sleeves, they keep like an indexed print of that stamp in that sleeve. And I know some people with some stamps that um, they used a mask with, they keep that mask yeah with the stamp in that sleeve which i always thought was a great idea all right let's go with one more of this one i was i was um i'll see if i can yeah i think i'll use that smaller one in the background there okay this is probably going to be about a 50 percent impression of this one in terms of the utilization of the image let's go like right here here, something like that. Let's mask off that tree right here. Uh, let's see, let's go about like that. I'm just kind of overlapping that previous one by a little bit. Use a little bit more pressure around that mask, like that. Like I said, it's going to be filled in quite a bit, though. All right. And <clears throat> if we want to take a look, I always recommend when you're doing these reflection cards to um, get your bearings and see what that reflection is going to be looking like, looking like down there, like that. See, like that, it's it's good to have this kind of open space in here, but I want this forest to be a, um, a lot more dense, okay? So let's go with the smaller one, kind of right back in here. Now, see, I'm going to be doing it probably up here or so, roughly. So let's fill this space in. Let's go back to our textural stamps. 
and I'll go in with this one right in here. Okay. Now I, I'm, I'm thinking of, I could go with this one with a, uh, with um, like a dark green or something like that. But let's just stick with black here. Okay. Um, let's go like that. And I don't, I don't feel like masking her off. So I'm just going with a, a lighter impression of the sedge filler right next to her so that if I did stand, you know, I can see it right here. I'm not going to stamp into her face, but you know, if I did a little bit, it wouldn't be a big deal because it's such a pale gray version of that black in the second impression right there. Okay. So uh, that being said, let's go with this right in here. I don't want to create too much space like way up here. I want to bring this down a little bit. Think about like that. Maybe over here. Boy, I'm really getting rid of some of that contrast up there by like stamping that whole space out. But for this composition, I think that's where we want to go here. All right, let's do a little bit of a lighter impression though, now I look at it. Okay, so I'm gonna blot this off once like that. And then let's go right in here. All right, that is going into her body a little bit and face. Let's mask that off a little bit like so. I'm going to be going into this tree up here, but this is going to be a lighter gray, so it's not really going to matter. I might have a canopy of a, some additional um, imagery. Okay, I don't want to go into her face, face actually. That would be bad design. <laughs> you want to, Figures are something that, yeah, they're visual landing points or focal points, whatever. Um, of a scene, so you don't want to scare people's face. People look like at something's face usually um, first, at least, and, and probably secondary. You know, and I like, I don't know, unless someone's into shoes and the figure is wearing some kind of shoe or something like that. You know. All right, so much lighter version like that. I need to give more impre yeah, pre impression pressure on the center and things like that. But all right, let's see here. Let me let me use this. I'm going to add in just some other tree forms in the background. Um, just with this third, was it third impression? Yeah, third impression right in here. Uh, just to make things look a little bit denser. Okay. That see that little shadow back in there. It's going to be all obscured, but if you kind of have a little bit of a, a hint of some form, sometimes it can add to that. Um, oh, kind of visual space and uh, I don't know, just depth. Okay, maybe we need another one right back in there too. Like I said, I want this one. I want this top scene to be fairly dense. It's kind of what I intended for these mossy trees. I haven't used them too much, but I, um, I wanted to do this kind of real plush green um, scenario with these ones, like how I intended these, you know, with these trees really kind of having a kind of a greenish tone. And I figured, well, it's March and St. Patrick's Day just happened. <laughs> okay, so anyways, that's what that's looking right, right there. Let's take a look here, Let's see. Yeah. Okay, now see right here, I want her to just really stand out. So she's going to be kind of illuminated in here. So I'll kind of spotlight her a little bit. But the rest of this piece in here, let's make it kind of kind of murky and dense. And, you know, I want it to feel a little bit, um, I wouldn't say damp, but plush. And uh, like I said, rich in there, okay? You see this area right down here where um, this grass transitions into what this represents down here, which is water. I want to go from darker up in here, 
maybe to a little bit lighter right in here, but right next to this water, we want that to be a little bit dark. Okay, but anyways, that being said, let's just get an overall um, kind of tonal um, layer going in here. Um, some of my trees might be a little bit moist right here. Let's heat set this a little bit. Hello, Sharita. Now, Laura, what, what do you guys mean by fuzzy cut? Is it so that you don't you don't want to have like a like a hard edge then or something like that? I have glitter all over the place here. Okay, so I brought out some um, different inks right here. I thought I'd start off with some distress. Um, Maybe we'll go with the Memento, actually. I do have the reinker for the London Fog right here. All right, now I, I'm i going to expect some of this um, ink right here, this dye-based ink that I've stamped this out with. I mean, we could have stamped it and stays on if we wanted to. I'm going to be using some stays on later on for my lower section, but um, I don't care if some of this smears. Um, because, I, like I said, I want this to be kind of a murkier um, looking um, scenario. Um, that's the feel that I'm going after in this piece. All right. All right. So um, just with some ink that you, you know, in a scene like this, this is a lot of area to cover in here, this half page piece. But I'm just going to be doing kind of a base layer tone in here. And it, it, I would be doing it in probably antique linen or something like that, one of the beige tones, if I had that reinker for that one. Um, but since I don't, I'm just going to use this gray because the gray, you know, is going to be going in here anyway. So I would just stick with a lighter, you know, tone to do this kind of base layering in here. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to establish some shadows. I want to get a pretty good coverage with it though, too. Um, but it will also, because I'm doing my shadows in here, it, it'll also kind of start to establish um, uh, some of my lighting scheme, okay? I, I, this is just a paper towel that I'm utilizing here. Okay, I like to go kind of a little bit uh, darker. Here comes that smearing right over here. I'm kind of using a light touch right here, okay. Um, we'll add on a little bit of a vignette in here, like so. If you don't want it smeared, then just kind of tap or do both, okay? Like if an area is like really gonna smear, like where it's like the darkest black and thick black right there, then just kind of tap over that region. But like I said, I, I don't really mind if it kind of smears right now because I'm gonna be using so much color on this. And then I'm gonna be coming in here with some additional stamp imagery and stamping kind of uh, some leaves up top here um, later on too. All right, so this is remember the kind of that darker region right here next to the water transition area so it's right here and at the base of my trees like about like so now i'm i'm going to be adding in a lot of colored pencils too but this is just going to give me a much faster kind of head start um, to that process or that addition. All right, you can already kind of see the lighting scheme kind of working in here. All right, I was getting, I don't, I don't mind, like I said, that smearing, I don't want, I don't necessarily want this area to be smeared too much though, because that's kind of a lighter area and that's kind of where my lighting is gonna be coming in. So it'll be like obvious if there's like smeared kind of, you know, background trees in there, right in that region. 
All right, so my tree's right here. Let's get some tone up into those, like so. I just kind of pinched this off and made kind of a narrower um, ink applicator, like that. Let's go about like so, and I think that should be good right there. Uh, let's go a little bit more, actually. This is going to be a, a kind of a lighter tone. And I have several other colors to come. So let me get a little bit more coverage, actually, now that I think about it. Okay. So you're kind of directing our lighting, you know, a little bit more of the focus now is on our subject matter because we've darkened out these areas around here. So this is what this is looking like here. <clears throat> cut around the image as opposed to have a die to cut it out with. Oh, okay, got it. Hello, Barit. All right, let's take a look at that. That's a pretty good reflection going in there. She still stands out, like back in here. Maybe I'll make the area around her a little bit darker, okay? So see this area right in here? I didn't really cut color in any background ink right in there. Okay, I've come up into these trees right here, but see this little space right in here? If I want her to stand out a little bit more, now I don't know if I should use the paper towel for that. Maybe I should use colored pencil, but there's so little ink on this now. I think I'm going to try it with this. Yeah. It's transferring a little bit. Yeah, okay, that, that worked okay. So see that little area right there, that little tone right behind her face? I mean, it's only like a 5% gray or something like that, but then it makes her stand out a little bit more. And that's what we want her standing out in that reflected area, so we have to create a little bit more contrast right back in there. All right, um, let's see. My antique linen is kind of anemic now. There's several, I, I've needed to get a bunch of different um, re-inkers for a long time. I haven't gotten around to it because I'm buying other things. <laughs> and then I have other kind of similar tones, you know, that I just use, um, but we have enough here. All right, so I'm going to come in here, and this is going to warm up our shadow areas. I'm going to retain some of my white in here because I want to come in here later on and use some white pigment ink to create this kind of foggy effect. So you need to retain some of your white in there for that to kind of make sense because if you have this kind of white mist in here, it means that you have some white light reflecting off some of your objects in there. You don't have to have a lot of it, retain a lot of it, but you just want some of it somewhere. Now, if it, you know you accidentally get rid of everything, then you can kind of do something where you kind of create a little bit of a light source with your white pigment ink, but I just like to retain some of that. It just, it just makes it easier later on, okay? So hopefully you can see this in the video here, these little bit of a warmer tone grays. It's a little bit richer of a gray now because we've added a little bit of temperature to it. Not that you have to, you know. I, I, I like neutral grays as well, like black and white photography or something like that. But for our purposes here, um, I think this is adding kind of a nice addition to, you know, whatever the visual scheme by introducing temperature into it. And it, there, like I said, there's gonna be greens in here too, but like I want it to be kind of a murkier green. When you add kind of grays underneath things too, and then your color on top of it, it adds to this murkier version and not as bright a version, you know, in terms of intensity. Um, so that's what we're kind of doing here. Now in the end, we might not even see a lot of this um, 
uh, antique linen here because we're going to be covering it up with other colors. But the colors that we're going to add over the top of it are transparent, so it does influence kind of the end result, even if it's kind of more of a, a subtle and even unseen, undiscernible, you know, take on that color. All right, so anyways, she's standing out a little bit more, you know, the darker we go. And again, you know, that's going to reflect down in here a little bit stronger. Okay. All right, let's, let's get into the greens here. Speaking of the greens, I think that's enough of that one. Actually, here, I haven't used this walnut stain. I thought these, I thought my inks, you know, were a little bit too dry, but I tried them in a um, private lesson the other week, and I thought, oh, there was a little bit more tone in there. Okay, this is walnut stain. Kind of more of that brownish tinge, you know, uh, of distress ink. And again, it doesn't have to be these specific colors. These are, just happen to be the ones that I have, so. Um, but kind of a warmer tinged, you know, um, thing. Like, like if you have um, any kind of beige uh, type of tone that would work. Um, all right, let's get this a little bit around in here too. That looks pretty decent, I think. When I just work only in greens, when I'm doing kind of a green colored scenario, it looks too hot of a green. So I like, a lot of times I add these over the tops of my greens too. Um, like if I'm doing a meadow or something like that, I kind of make an assessment of how it looks and then I might mute it out a little bit with some brown tones, warm brown tones or something like that. Grays, but it's usually kind of in that, um, kind of warm tone spirit. All right, we have that right there. I like nice, deep, rich shadows, so my shadow areas um, get a lot of um, layers of uh, ink or media down, okay? All right, peeled paint. I'm gonna use the same, um, in this case, paper towel for that um, addition or application. And like I said, and this one, I really want these trees to kind of be kind of real mossy covered. So I'm going to come up with my greens into these trees that I'm doing here. something like that and let's get in to some of our brighter greens now I think yeah I mean this isn't you don't have to do this like in this type of sequence either I typically like working um, lighter to darker but sometimes I just go in grayscale and I do gray and black, and then you come in and tint it later. That's typically what I do with kind of larger um, scenes too, um, just because I don't have to color everything through a big, huge, you know, range of specific colors. I, I'm thinking most like if I did a scene that had green grasses or something like that brown grasses, you know, and then um, it was autumn, and then there's trees that are oranges and reds and yellow, golds, you know, stuff like that. 
um, if you have the kind of this base layer type of um, oh kind of color builds in the background where you already have your kind of shadows established I, I just find it, it makes it much easier and faster to um, you know to get to the end result that way and I think it's because I don't know if I'm building everything up you know individually as opposed to this whole kind of um, take on a uh, I don't know, whatever, shadows and light. If some area starts getting really dark um, earlier, and I figured, you know, there's no reason to go in there with the lighter tones like that. So um, smaller pieces, I'll, I'll build it up like this, though. But if this is a 11 by 17, I'm not doing it this way. <laughs> it's just too, it just takes too much time. Yeah, you know, I'd rather spend the time, you know, uh, doing like details or something like that on a big, you know, huge scene. If that was confusing, what I'm saying is I just kind of work more, you know, I just establish my darker areas faster on bigger pieces, you know, and then I don't spend so much time kind of developing every every little section of that scene from you know incrementally darker tones all right so that was um the peeled paint that we did there and this one's like a this one's celery so it's like this i'm just gonna you know be getting a little bit darker um with each tone each value of green in here. And that's not even that. I, I, I figure I'm gonna be spending a lot of time with like three tones of uh, colored pencils too, okay? This is a pale green right here. It looks a little bit more green-ish. Yeah. Remember this pale green is not going to look like pale green you know, the ink right here, this pale green ink right here is that color. And that's what it represents over a white piece of paper, you know, like this color right here, but over the top of this and all those colors that we laid down underneath it, those colors underneath are showing right through and influencing what we can see. Uh, again, because of the transparent nature of dye-based inks. It's the same thing with alcohol inks to you know and i don't know what else I mean, colored pencils to to an extent i use glitter paper for a card awesome now i have glitter all over <laughs> did you post it candy Yeah, this glitter is all over the place, you know. Um, and I haven't really used it you know, for a few weeks now. I, I think it, unless we're like vacuuming our, you know, our work area, huh? We never really get rid of it all. All right, let's see. Um, jungle green. I think this one's not even going to show up here. Eh, maybe a little. Not too, well, I don't know. I could see it. All right. This is a really bright green. Okay, so in that private workshop that I was doing, I was doing those um, Northern Lights right here. If you can get Marvy number 11 light green, it, it, I don't know if it's available in pad form anymore. You can check on the Mar uh, Uchida website um, or just a reinker for it, okay? If you have, one of the things I was mentioning to my, uh, you know, the person that was taking the class was um, you can have a bunch of different greens from any other company, you know, because, you know, like Marvy isn't making their inks anymore, okay? But you can have a bunch of different inks from another company, all right, greens, let's say you had 
a bunch of memento and stampin up and I don't know, distress okay in green so if you had five of them or something like that and you were layering them um, and if you wanted to get them brighter all you'd have to do is layer one Marvy ink in that sequencing wherever and it'll brighten up all the rest of those in terms of intensity if you want to achieve kind of the maximum intensity um, you can do that and you don't need too many Marvy inks let's say you had a a yellow blue and a pink or something like that you know those are kind of the primary colors I can put a yellow Marvy in here too right because yellow is a component of green or if you had violet you can add in you know Marvy light blue or something like that okay um, now when you're using all these other colors um, these inks will kind of dry dull too other brands of inks when you're layering them like this so just spray seal it okay um, but that's how that's how you get um, these really super deep um, um, saturations of uh, inks if you want that top end intensity okay I mean it's not you know the other inks aren't dull or anything like that it's just that Marvy inks are um, they're just brighter and more intense in general okay and I'm mentioning this because you know it's you got to get them while you can <laughs> you know uh, Marco's papers has some um, um, was that one stop or I forget um, has them still um, it, mostly the reinkers they're mostly um, the pads are mostly gone though in certain colors all right so see that was a marvy bottle green right in there look how intense that is right in there okay and let's see here let's do a little bit of this masking right here and get a little bit of a, a little bit more of a varied application of some of this ink so we'll go like this we'll start down here and just kind of blend that in like so against that mask mostly working on the mask and you can get that little bit of a varied slightly more varied application and I like that varied look in these grasses like this it you'll be able to see it more when I get to the black here coming up and then we'll get to the colored pencils and really develop that a little bit more right there you get a little edge going in there like that like so um, hmm. okay let's go to black all right after bottle green the next stop is black I'm gonna use that same bottle green um, applicator there and be careful when you go with uh, something really dark like black okay you want to have a lot of control over it and don't apply more than you think you'll need if you do then you can blend it out later on but you know the less work the better right so like that I'm just getting that little bit of a, a jagged application of that just to create a little bit of a separation right in there than just you know toning everything in uniformly and I, again I like to have that transition between um, top scene and the reflected area darker so I'm going darker right in here but see that little bit of ridge right in there I'm going to keep that okay and let's go with this again right about like so come down here we'll add in some additional textures into here too I'll show you what that means in a bit so again I don't want like a you know like a you know 
bunny rabbit Easter card, you know, type of thing um, with super bright tone greens. I, I want them bright, you know, but I want also, like, like I said, I want them a little bit murkier in this uh, scenario that I'm uh, trying to go for right here. I'm finding my application right in here, this black, to be really slow because it's so moist now with um, the application of all the other inks underneath it. So I'm kind of tapping wet into really kind of damp right here. But it makes the blending easier, though, too. This area just does not want to get darker right now. It is so wet. I can hit it with a, you know, um, you know, a heat gun or something like that. I don't like doing that though. If I don't, absolutely don't have to. All right, get something like that going in there. See this real bright green like that. A little bit of a different green over here. Let's take a look here and see what this is looking like. Like that. Oh, look at this right here. So I tend to forget about this sometimes, but this is reflecting some light back up into here. So I have light hitting this just like that right there. So everything looks a little bit darker, but now we have light right from right here, but then the light coming off here, the silver cardstock is reflecting back up in here. So this area up in here is a little bit lighter, you know, as a result, um, like that. So you can adjust accordingly. The name of the best white pencil, huh? Is that a question there, Candy, or, or were you just, or did someone else ask that right there? Um, one of the pencils that I've been using is the uh, Schwann Stabilo, S-T-A-B-I-L-O, Carbothello, um, which is a white pastel pencil. I don't know if you're talking about that, but that just comes to mind because I've been using that one a lot lately. All right, applying a little bit more black right there. It's taken a little bit more just from me blabbing there for a few, you know, a minute. Or something like that. I can tell this page has gotten a little bit drier, at least in this really super, you know, moist area. All right, I'm going to hit this, uh, my corners right here, um, and a little bit of the edge with a little bit more uh, framing here. This. Uh, Um, kind of this vignette right in here, like about like that. All right. And okay, so this right down here, when you start coming into these areas like this, it, mostly it's with grasses with me, okay? Um, I, that's a lot of layers of ink down there, and um, it can look a little bit. Um, muddled, okay? It's rich with tone and layers of ink, but if you want to re-inject those areas with something that's crisp, what you do is you stamp in um, imagery that's nice and crisp right back into that, okay? Um, I'm going to come in one of the ones that I really like using images is the winter brush here. It's this real sharp, you know, kind of little cluster of um and it's like bare, like a bare bush or something like that. Okay. I'm gonna put some of that down there. And then I might layer it again with some additional reeds or something like that. But what you do is you just use your mask like this and you're gonna stamp it like that. Okay. I'm gonna do this in the black Marvy, I guess. I could go with the uh, stays on though. 
Okay, let me add this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it at all over here, but I might be able to. It's just black against very, very dark, so I don't know if it'll show up in there, but I want it in a few different areas, so. Okay. Have a look at this right here. We have a little bit in front of this tree and off to the side. Like that. Is that Christmas right there? Right in there. I mean, I think it really adds to the uh, the look here. It's um, it's contrasting textures in here in some ways. It's real, like I said, it's real kind of muddled down here and diffused. But then we have this element of crisp right back into that. Okay. So we have that. I think I will use the uh, reeds. Like I said, I want it kind of, I want this piece to be really quite dense. Oh, I need to use my colored pencils in here too. And it'd be nice if I was able to do that first and then stamp these images over it. But I don't, I'm not even sure if the stays on will stick really well to a heavily applied colored pencil application, you know, because it's wax. So it might kind of resist it a little bit. Hello, Megan Ells. Good to see you. Hello, Patty. All right. Let's see here. Going down here, right on the water's edge. Okay. Uh, this piece should have been done, like, last week, you know, <laughs> before the St. Patrick's Day. My son was getting, um, has been getting uh, some physical therapy um, for this... Yeah, he does this sport called tricking where it's a lot of like tumbling and twirls and, you know, aerial spins and stuff. Um, but anyways, he was at, at his uh, physical therapy place. It was um, a sign up that if you wear green to your um, session during the entire month of... Uh, March, you'll get entered into a drawing. <laughs> I don't know, to win something, maybe some, I don't know, treatment or something, I don't know. Okay, let's take a look and see what this is looking like right here. I almost don't even need any colored pencils, but I think the colored pencils will just make it a little, little bit more kind of um, rich in depth, okay? All right, but the trees really need some colored pencil work in here, um, some development. And then, okay, I need to do, I want to do some overhanging um, leaves as well. So uh, let's do that right now. Okay, so we have that crisp area um, elements coming up from the bottom. I need to blend those in a little bit more too. They're a little bit too crisp. But I'm going to have some um, leaves coming down from this top portion, okay? And... Um, then I'll hit it with the uh, the colored pencils, and we'll see what we can develop from there. All right, so hmm, for this top portion, let's go with it. Let's try a couple different values instead of just doing it all black. Um, let me try some really dark green here for some of these and then I'll do um, black right over the top of it okay this bottle green doesn't look as dark as I thought it would be 
It almost looks like I re-inked this pad with um, green instead of bottle green, but uh, oh well. <laughs> All right, so this is that layering that I was talking about too. Like if you, you know, if you didn't get something in your impressions with the trunks or something like that, or you overlap something, you know, when I start doing like adding in these other types of components in here and additional layers, you know, it just it doesn't matter. It looks, it might look strange at the time when it happened, you know, when you layered something in there or you masked something and then stamped it out and it, you know, you didn't quite get it, you know, that mask in there perfectly. It, you know, if you're doing these additional things later on, you're hitting it with layers of ink and then, you know, several layers of some additional imagery. Um, all of those things are kind of pushed into the background anyway. Um, so I don't even worry about those types of things. Um, where other sometimes if people are starting off with this type of you know extreme layering of everything um, at like different steps in the process um, if something's standing out kind of weird they think it was kind of a mistake like they've gone astray and something happened that shouldn't have okay but for me I just know that it's you know it's going to be buried you know under under a bunch of other types of things any, anyway so. Um, it's just like part, you know, whatever, H, you know, uh, you know, and we're going all the way to whatever. Why? <laughs> so stick with your pieces, you know, and scenic stamping. If something kind of looks weird or something happens, you know, during the process, if you just keep adding to it, it just kind of, you know, it doesn't matter anyway. Especially if it's early on in the process, you know, I don't want to drop this stamp and it lands right on our face or something like that. Okay, but anyways, here's um, this other leaf. Uh, these are called leaves right here. And I'm just adding that right off the top of the green ones so that you have some black and some green in that background. It's looking a little bit busy for me now with these crisp impressions. So what I'll do is I'll just go in over the top of it and I'll add some more tone um, right over the top, just like these reeds down here. They're a little bit, um, um, they're a little bit, it's a little bit too crisp down here. You know, when I have a too much, you know, of these little barbs of, you know, black down there. So I want to kind of obscure those a little bit more. If you just joined in, this is a reflection card. And uh, I think that'd be a cool, you know, composition just as is, but we're gonna be adding it like this, you know, so all of our work up top there um, gets mirrored down below. So it's like you get double the bang for your buck in terms of your efforts. <laughs> Which is one of the things I love about reflection cards. You spend all this time up here, and it's here it is. Here's like two of them, you know. But you didn't have to do anything to, you know, to achieve that second, you know, whatever application of everything that you've already done. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's get to that. Uh, let's go, let me use this one right here. Looks like some black is on there already. This is really wet and moist down here, so I'm going to be careful not to obscure that too or you know I don't want to use this type of motion I'm just going to lightly dab on here um, all right so I'm cutting down the contrast between some of these reeds and that background um, you know grassy texture okay like this so I'm not really blending them, like physically blending any of the grasses. I'm just kind of cutting down the contrast between the background and that those reeds right in there. Okay. All right. Same thing with those um, 
winter brushes. Okay, like about like so. I don't want to come in here with this. This is kind of awkward for this little area in here, so I'm gonna use the uh, the colored pencil for that. Oh, let me see here. Up top, let's do that again with this top portion too, like this. I'm not doing this over everything, um, like adding this like all around in a uniform pattern like that. I've just kind of, see I've added dark right here and then see none of this black right down here is there, but did you see the, where this is like here, here. See how it goes a little bit dark and it's lighter, darker, lighter, darker like that. So you oscillate things a little bit. So it's not just, you know, so uniform everywhere. In terms of, you know, all of your applications, it's to, again, it's like checkerboarding um, kind of the usage of things. And then when I go into this later on with white, I'll put some white a little bit there, none, some, none, you know, that type of thing. And some people, that confuses a lot of people when you're doing it. It's like, wait a minute, well, how do you know where to add that? You know, where is it dark and where is it light? You know, where do you not put it well it's it's really wherever you want it to be you're just oscillating things you know it's you don't create that it's not like a wrong spot to add something it's it's not that's not like the the thing about it the thing is is just variation throughout okay like if this area was a little bit lighter over here and this one was darker light you know it went light dark light dark you know what i mean that would look fine too all right, so let's add in some of these tones into our trees. These are supposed to be mossy covered trees here. I, I missed out, you know, with some of my impressions right here, but I'm just gonna fill that in with, you know, some additional colored pencil right in here. So again, that didn't matter that that happened. You know, if, if you know, half the stamp didn't stamp out, then, you know, you might wanna stamp it again or something like that but you know for those little things like that no big deal okay so this is a little bit of a darker green um this is a semi-gloss card stock i'm kind of using the darker green right here um, i like to build up preferably from lighter tones to darker but this semi-gloss card stock is a little bit sealed off you know it has um some you know first of all it's clay coated you know being a, it's a card stock like a printer's card stock like even the matte one's going to be sealed with some of that clay and then this one has a semi gloss on it so what i'm getting at is i can't build up colored pencils too thick you know on here um you know, by, by the time I get to like a fourth coating or something like that, with the Prismacolors at least, um, they won't apply on here because I've coated everything already with wax and it's really hard to apply wax over top of wax. So I'm adding in some of those darker tones so that maybe I should just go right straight to black here too before I get into some of these lighter tones. So see that right there, you know, there was a couple like that spot right there. You just kind of fill it in. Really easy to do with the glossy cardstock too. I mean the the uh, semi-gloss cardstock. Glossy cardstock you can't do this with as much unless you have like super super um, soft uh, colored pencils. Um, I knew someone to, I, I mentioned this whenever I use colored pencils too, when I'm talking about, um, whatever the relative hardness of them, but some, I knew somebody that used, um, watercolor pencils for their colored pencil work because they felt that this is, this is years ago. Uh, she felt that it was, um, the watercolor pencils were softer than colored pencils. At that time, there, there's probably a, several different brands of uh, colored pencils now, but um, 
at that time she was using um, whatever, I don't know what brand of color pen, uh, watercolor pencils it was, but she liked those ones. And she didn't use them as watercolor pencils, she just used them as colored pencils. All right, so adding a little bit more tone to this background. Let's go a little bit darker on the tops, maybe, or the trees, where it's kind of closer to the, to the, uh, the canopy of uh, leaves up top. Let's add a little bit more shadow around her, too, maybe. So that looks like. Okay, so this, yeah, that colored pencil really, um, it remedied a lot of my uh, kind of impression errors, okay? I didn't have enough, you know, padding underneath here. I should have had, uh, like, even more. When I, we're doing, like, really large stamps with a lot of surface area, have more padding underneath your, uh, you know, where you're stamping. Packing, gosh, I hate packing. Is Sean, Kevin, the name, his name, his name is Sean. Green should be easy. <laughs> Let's see. My house went on the market Wednesday, and I had a showing that day and is now under con... Wow. My move will happen April 29th to Novi. Yeah, congratulations on that. One last thing to... Uh... It's kind of a hassle when you have to do so many showings, you know, and you got people coming over, like, at any given time. But that's awesome, Patty. You'll be right next to that convention there, Patty. It's a good thing. That's one of those, con you know, stamp conventions that's still happening. And I'm guessing it's probably still, you know, uh, these conventions, I don't think any of them are like they were, you know, 20 years ago. But that one was always a very, you know, well... Um, you know, whatever, well attended, that's the word I'm looking for, in terms of um, both the uh, stampers and vendors. If that's something that you like going to. Is anyone here, did anyone here ever go to the Novi uh, stamp convention? Especially lately? Was that too much fun rubber stamps that put that on? I can't remember. All right, I'm adding some shadows here using my black uh, pencil a little bit more. And I'm, I'm getting a little bit darker than probably, you know, what I would normally do. Just if this was just, you know, if I was only doing it for this scene's purpose. But since it's the reflection card, and with all that, this is a large area of light to be, like, shining up into there like that. Look at that. See that right there? There's the, there's the card. There's the reflection. Look at that light it puts back up in there like that. So, um, see, it's a little bit more illuminated. I don't like that right there. It needs a little bit more variation, so... Let's come into this a little bit more dark green and add some variation right in here. I don't really like this area right in here in terms of the coloring, but the thing is I'm coming into this area. I wanted it really kind of misty, you know, that look. So I just know that white pigment ink is going to be going over that area, or some of this area in here, you know, and back in these trees. So that's my thoughts on that. But 
let's see, let me add a little bit more colored pencil to it and let's see if we can kind of make some of these tones a little bit richer. Um, you know, before that application of additional media. Ooh, that green looks really good right there. Do you see that? Huh. I don't know if I can... Let's see if I can get some more of this green in there. Um, just the straight green. Here, let's add this up in this little ridge, too. We'll vary this little background area of uh, grass. I need to color her something too. I'm, I haven't decided yet if I'll do that just in colored pencils or whatnot. Right, something like that. It's a little bit better. Yeah, this green is kind of uh, remedying a lot of my uh, object or area woes right in here. Okay. Something like that. Oh, hmm. I just put a little bit of tone right here, and she stands out, like, a lot more now. All right, something like that. Let's develop that a little bit more. This is a... This is kind of like a Christmas green, something. Dark green. Here's an olive green, so... A little bit of a lighter green. It's not going to get lighter, you know, putting it over the top of that other one, but maybe it'll get a little bit richer of a green or warmer, maybe a little bit. So I forget about this tree right back in here. Let's just do that one really light. Let me see, I put one over here too, huh? Another background tree. Sometimes I forget about those background images. Let me see, let me use a little bit of this in here. And then go to black. There's a little bit of brown here. Uh, dark brown. This didn't seem like dark brown. This one looked like this one's a darker brown than that. Oh, this is sepia. Sepia, sepia, whatever. Now that looks better. Sepia. It's what the it's like the most common, I don't know. It seemed like the most common color uh, that everyone used in uh, like art school and painting classes. I don't know, maybe titanium white was uh, more commonly used, but in terms of like a hue, you know. All right, so there she's standing out pretty decently. Something like that, all right. It's coming together a little bit more, I think, right here. Let's go with a little bit of black right here. I want to 
kind of blend this tree, these this trio of uh, trunks into the piece a little bit more. Maybe we can do that with um, some shadow or something. Alright. This area down here is largely um, dry at this point in time. It's probably a little bit damp, but eh, I can see a couple of these blades still kind of shiny where the ink hasn't dried, but by and large it's it's fairly um, set up here. Okay. A little bit darker up towards the canopy of leaves. So I'm kind of going like dark, a little bit lighter. It's still dark though. It's like dark, lighter, dark down here, okay? Kind of. Subtly, you know, darker up top and at the bottom in some cases. All right. Hmm. that I need really need some variation within the trunks right in here and that's where that white pigment ink is gonna come into play but um, I almost need another tree impression right in here I think unless I put like an object in there I don't think I want to though uh, okay I I think I do need another trunk back in that space. Um, I was going to say that maybe there's like some residual ink on this. Okay, I want a real light one right in here. Yeah, it's kind of a hassle having to kind of add that in at this point in time, because now it's like I have to go and color it, you know, back in. We'll, we'll try to make this really fast, though. And it's not going to serve, it's not going to serve the uh, reflection card filling in that, you know. But again, I, I wanted this piece to be kind of really dense, you know, with the you know, kind of imagery and, uh, um, you know, a thick forest in this case. It was, it was too open here. It looked like it was at the end of the forest or something like that, you know, not having this um, other tree in there. All right, let's go with a little bit of this lighter green, like so. I'll just do this with the colored pencils. That'll make it go really fast, I think. And you don't want to color it darker than the impression itself, too, so. All right. Is that like three tones of green, or was that two? And then we'll come in with the, the black here. All right, something like that. I think, okay, let me see, yeah, it's okay, uh, you can still get that reflection pretty decent down there. Hello, Jeannie, I look forward to stamp shows, conventions, West Palm Beach, uh, there was only in 
Florida, there was the Orlando show. Um, and then I was up in the Jacksonville. There was a Jacksonville convention. And it, there was probably other ones in Florida, but I can't remember. But those are the two ones, the two that I attended um, over the years. I think I did Orlando once. It could have been twice, though. No, I think it was twice. I need a little bit of brown in this one. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. Okay, so this lower section right here, I need some imagery down here, too. So I'm going to put in some rocks down here. Um, we'll keep it fairly minimal, though. Um... Hmm. I've been using my my rock row for my cactus a lot. This is such a good stamp for this uh, area down below. How's it going, Janie? Janie just moved too. What was your address again, Jeannie, so everyone can see? <laughs> I'm joking, folks. Just think I gotta put that up there. All right, stays on for this area down here. Don't use dye based inks on your, uh, you know, mirrored, you know, reflective card stocks. Uh, you can use Memento, um, that's another one, but you'll just have to spray seal it. The stays on, you don't have to spray seal. Okay, let's see. It stays on. I, I never know how long to uh, make my impression for. Sometimes you make an impression too long, you know, as, I don't know, one of my other live streams that like, um, now this mirrored card, this silver um, card stock like this, it it's different than um, like some of those holographic card stocks. As Linda has, you know, shown here. Did, was that that, was that? I can't remember. You did that testa. You did that testa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Linda just did that test printing um, um, diagram on uh, um, foils, right? Was that, was that? Linda, you've done so many of those really great uh, um, comparison contrast, you know, comp you know media compatibility uh, pieces. Now I'm kind of thinking wait was that what you what you did there because you also did that other um piece on um inks and uh what they can you know ink compatibility uh, ink compatibility chart okay those are some smaller rocks i'm gonna put some smaller rocks up here okay now i need to get my bearings here and see where my reflection of especially of that lady is going to be this reclining figure. See these rocks down here. Now, see you don't want you don't want to do is here's the figure right here. Okay, reflecting in this area. So this whole area, right? You don't want to put these rocks right here. Okay, you want to have her, you know, reflection to be fairly distinct. So you want these on the sides, you know, or just you know, you just anywhere. In this case, right here, anywhere, but like right in here. Okay, so I can put it out to the side like that. And that's not going to be an issue. Okay, so what is that? So you just need to kind of get your bearings here. So that's midway up and about an inch into it like that. Okay, so that makes sense because that's, you know, about an inch that way. So just don't block off what you're going to be having reflected down there. Okay, let's see. Let's go like that.
your mirrored card gets all smudgy too while you're working on it, but you can just wipe that off later on. Now, ideally, there's some white light areas on these rocks, and sometimes what I do is I block those area off with white pigment ink, and then I stamp this over the top of it, but I'm not going to do that on this one. I just want these rocks in here. Okay, so it's going to be like this. And hopefully, I placed them in a decent area. About like so. Hopefully that looks fairly three-dimensional. We have those reeds in the background right in there. Let's put some of those reeds on like this side of the uh, pond in the lower section too. Um, okay, let's go like this. Again, using the stays on ink. I'll have. I'm going to do something that I usually don't do. I'm going to put this. These reeds like here, like there's a like I'm there's a shoreline right here, but maybe not right here. Okay, it looks like that. Okay. Let's add in some details into this piece. I do have my little green leaves that I want to add in down here too. I don't think I've used the green ones yet, or did I? I don't think I did. All right. So, um, acrylic 0.7 millimeter paint pens, okay? And kind of this is the color scheme that I used. Okay, so here's you know pens. You know, it's roughly like you know these colors right here. You know this one's kind of similar to the antique linen, but you know these. You know this one right here is kind of roughly like these ones right here, and then white. Okay. So it's just using the same color scheme. And it's the same thing with the uh with the uh with the colored pencils that I use too. You know, they're they're all kind of written roughly, you know, the same family of tones, okay? Oh yeah, the figure. Let me see here. Um I need to add in a little bit of tone into her. Maybe I'll use some colored pencil here. I don't want her just completely anemic, unless she's a vampire. She's largely in shadow, but again, we kind of have the spotlight on her a little bit, just in terms of uh, visibility. So, warm tones in general. And let's put her in a, let me see that color of, Oh, 
do I want to integrate her with a green dress or do I want that dress to slightly stand out? Um, huh. I, I think I would put, put her in green. I want, I want her really integrated. Okay, so that dress in there is already toned, so I'm just going to add that color into those highlights on the, uh, in the, in the, uh, illustration like that. All right. A little bit more. I'm going to say purple. I'm going to give her a little bit of just a darker tone around in the shadows right in here. All right. Okay, so let's add in some highlights and then we'll get in with um, some of our uh, textures. These are textures too, though. Memento on foil. Wow, I didn't know that. Another, wait, what do you mean memento on foil? Did I say memento on foil? Stays on on foil. Or did someone mention something else? Okay. Yeah, Jeannie, you're like a... Jeannie's, when Jeannie stamps, it's more like a sport. So when she hasn't been stamping, it's like someone going like... If you're a runner and you don't run for like, you know, a while. Like a few weeks or something like that. Um, you know. It's like you're getting out of it like from a physical standpoint. <laughs> and once you start doing it, Jeannie, you'll get back into it, no problem. You've been doing it, you've been stamping for too long, you know, for it to not just come right back to you. Although I do I do know what you what you mean though. If I don't stamp something out for like a I don't know, sometimes even if it's even like for like a week, it feels like, oh my gosh, you know, I feel like I haven't done it for like ages. Okay, so I'm adding in some highlights right around. See that little highlight that's still in there? You see these grass highlights right in here? That's where I'm going in with my pen, my light green here. I'll come into it with other colors too, but that's where I'm starting off with. Okay, I'm hitting light into light. I wish I could zoom in a lot closer, but... My camera will go out of focus. So it's just a real kind of subtle highlighting right in here, okay? And then it'll just get more um, visible the lighter I go. But I like to start it off really subtle here first. The tips of your pens as you're doing this, if you're doing it over colored pencil or chalks or something like that, or brilliance pigment inks or something like that, any type of media that might be a little bit loose especially if you're going into it like that, it might clog up. So you just scribble it off a little bit and just get that tip free to flow again. See, I, I was going over it right up here and it clogged a little bit on me. This area down below doesn't have any colored pencil though. It's just all straight um, um, dye-based inks like that. But see that little highlighting right in there? So it kind of, this is going in and kind of defining some of my forms in here a little bit that got really murky and uh, kind of undefined with the amount of layering that I laid down in there. So this is a way to go back into it now, see? And you're not, you're not trying to undo anything that you did because you wanted to lay down all those inks in here um, to get that rich um, 
color saturation going in there. But now what you're doing is um, you're just going back in and adding kind of a, a nice crisp element back into that area like that. Now see that's done in this light green. If I if I want some in this really dark area, you can go to a you know a darker green and you know lay some of that down too. So it's like a dark green on top of like black instead of like something like this that would show up, you know, too too much. I don't like that, but so it's like right here in the background, um, this area that kind of got muddy, you know, muddied with all of that tone and, you know, kind of my, you know, feeble, you know, kind of color pencil technique, you know, which is not refined or developed in any sense, you know. Um, I just go back into it with my pens like this and it, you know, it looks, you know, um, you know, it masks over, you know, my shortcomings. So <laughs> that's what's great again about scenic stamp, you know, you can, you know, you don't have to be, you know, really great at any type of thing. It would help, you know, um, but you can always just kind of layer something over something, um, you know, if you're trying out a new medium or something like that and, uh, you know, experimenting something for the first time, looks a little bit clunky and awkward. You know, in my case, I just put like white pigment ink over everything, but this is something like, you know, something too that really saves me a lot of times with, um, um, layers because it's a it's a layer that I'm putting on top over something okay so it's like you're bearing something you know underneath it okay so here's some of that green I want you know when I started talking about that one I thought eh, let's go ahead and try that one I don't really use my darker um, paint pens too often it's usually the lighter ones that are doing some kind of highlighting um, yeah, maybe I can get some textures in here with this. It's it's really very um, obscure. I can see it in front of me right here. I don't know if I'll be able to see it when it dries, though. Okay. All right, let's get with some of these more highlights. and Those ones you can see um, me applying in here. But see this right here? Doesn't that little passageway of these little illuminated um, highlights... It it adds that little kind of sparkle um, to a scene. That's really nice. Okay, this is the beige tone, which is probably a little bit lighter than, yeah, it's lighter than the green that I used before. So you can use a little bit more sparingly because it kind of shows up a little bit more like that. It looks really kind of weird there if you just add it in one space because you, that's supposed to be highlighting right there. So if those highlights aren't, you know, where the rest of, you know, all the other areas of your light in it kind of looks a little bit strange. So, you know, just know that when you start doing something like this, you have to kind of, you know, unify the whole piece with that similar um, lighting in this case, you know, because highlights are, you know, a reflection of lighting. Okay. Uh, um, let's add some to these leaves up top, maybe, too. I don't know. Kind of adding a little bit of a highlight on the sides of some of these trees like that. That looks all terrible, so I'm erasing it. <laughs> Let me see if I can do that better here. Here, I'll put some on the tops of these branches like this. Yeah. This paint doesn't dry so fast, so if you add something like these little highlights on those areas, you know, if you don't like it, you just wipe it right off. 
you know, it's acrylic paint, so it's not like, you know, doing this with like a solvent ink or something like that that's going to dry like instantly on you. And then again, this little scratch, you know, this is like a little mark like that. It's kind of adding a little bit of definition to this real murky kind of area in here. You don't want to do it over everything. You don't want to outline everything, but just little, you know, highlights here and there can, um, you know, can make a pretty big difference in some cases. There's some little highlights on the side of a couple of these trunks, maybe. Like that. See those little highlights right, right out there? Um, it looks really good on the branches, I think. It kind of pulls the, um, visually, it kind of separates these objects from the background ones like that, just having that little bit of highlight, you know, the side of a, you know, those trunks like that too. Let's see, I'm going to put some highlight on her shoulder right here. Yeah. Okay, you can do this too. Um, you can add these types of little highlights onto your rocks, you know, that are going into the lower section as well if you want to. All right, um, let's go to white here. I'm kind of tossing around. I think I want to do these little orbs in here, these little floating orbs. I think those might, or you know, even if it's just a couple of them, it might look kind of interesting like that. Okay. It's a little woodland dreamer type of thing like this. All right, so I'm making us taking an assessment here in terms of this white pen. Okay, let's add let's add a few of these highlights right in here, in a, in these lighter areas. I think that looks better. Uh, it, I didn't know. I didn't know if I wanted it kind of darker, but I think these white highlights are really. I think that brought it to life even more. Let me add some of that on some of these trees. I'll just do a little nick um, addition to the already existing. Uh, well, highlights that I put on some that might stand out too much. All right. Yeah, it looks better. It looks kind of more, I don't know. Uh, the illusion of space, I think, is um, increased there with that. Boy, I'm tossing around the idea of adding in some other tones in here, like like bluebells or something like that, like a carpet of bluebells in here. Hmm. I'll keep it subtle here. I think this really pale blue like this. Just for a little bit of a different... Um, Oh, kind of a hue change in here. Sometimes if you expand on the uh, the hue range of a piece too, just by stepping out like one extra step, you know, so it's going with the yellow greens to the green, and then over on the other side of that, um, whatever range of green tones would be blues, right? So let's try that here. Okay, it's it's really subtle. It's this isn't a bright blue either, but I can get a little bit of this blue tone in here, or sneak some of it in, and have it look really pretty integrated in the uh, the, 
piece. I'll kind of cluster it a little bit more so it kind of represents not really highlights, but like flowers. We want kind of a real, kind of a, you know, a really nice um, setting for this character in here. It's, it's crawling with uh, textures now, but I'm going to mute that out with some of that white pigment ink, though. But, I don't know. I think we've made it kind of a nicer little area for for our character there to be enjoying the, uh, the scenery. See those little highlights right down in there? in the reflection area too, those little highlights right up there, they really kind of sparkle in that water area a little bit more now too. I think it, it, it made the water area look a little bit more kind of alive, I think. All right, let's, let's add in that white pigment ink. I think that's going to be really a, a fun addition to this piece here. 100% cotton, cotton ball. Um, white pigment ink. You can use any brand of pigment inks, white ones, okay? Um, dab into your cotton ball. This pad right here is kind of medium dry, so don't, you don't want to use a big blob of this paint. And then just kind of smash this down a little bit and push some of that ink back up into your ball like that. And again, you're smashing it down here so that you're not using this real frayed, you know, frilly cotton that you're applying this medium with. Um, but it's still nice and soft, okay? But again, it's not, you know, super saturated with ink. I know I dabbed into there a few times, but um, it's not, you know, this pad of mine. I keep it kind of medium dry. Okay, we're going to start adding this down in these areas, right in the lighter areas, okay, at first. And I'm also kind of assessing how moist this um, cotton ball is here. Oh, is it time for a change, Jeannie? I have a lot of black um, that I wore. <laughs> it was like back at a time when... Um, I think it was, um, I think at one point in time, I switched to like all this black wear so that I wouldn't have to have like separate, <clears throat> um, I wouldn't have to run a separate load of a uh, laundry. So like all my socks and everything were black. <clears throat> and this, this red one that I'm wearing all the time, it's like a super, it's like a, it's like an omni sheet or heat heat something so it has this metallic base on here so it's like super warm that's the theory of it at least it's supposed to keep you warm because it has this like metal shielding but it still breathes because it's just a pattern of um that me metallic whatever printed on there And I think, I don't know, I think it, uh, I think it helps with stamping, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> okay, so see this, like, diffusion right back in here? Maybe that's a little bit too much. Yeah, let's, like, remove some of it right in here. So it's, like, a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, because I wiped it off right in there. Okay, let's have some of this mist around our character, integrating her in with the setting, like that. Oh, and I used to do like a lot of hiking too, so a lot of my clothes are kind of like performance clothes, and um, so it's like if I'm out like climbing around and the bush and everything like that, everything is getting all kind of um, whatever. Um, tattered with a, 
um, you know, whatever, outdoor stains, but black, you can't see any of it, right? So I don't have to worry about any of that. All right, so see that right there? We have this mist kind of creeping in like that. I don't want to come in too much into here, I don't think. Let's, let's bring some of it right here. Here, let's do this right here. We'll do that mask, but with the uh, the fog too. You can do that with tone, but you can also do that with, you know, darkness, but you can also do it with light too. Like that, okay. See, you get that fog kind of rolling in like that. It really changes the piece, doesn't it? Okay, now see this tree right back in here? See, these trees are all kind of spatially, they're in the same kind of area. But let's do this, okay. And let's create a little bit of separation between the two, okay. So let's add a little bit of this mist like this, okay. Right back in there. So you see that you create that separation, you know, between that tree in front, the closer tree and the back tree like that, okay. All right. But we have some of that mist there, so I should probably put some in between these forms here, too, a little bit. Okay. But I'll have some of it creeping in between the trunks as well, like that. Okay. Yeah, let's even do this. We'll have, we have these three trunks right here. Let's put a little bit of separation between a couple of them, okay? So you can add, add a little bit of spatial um, variation into your pieces like that. See that right there? So it creates a little bit of a, a change. It's not so repetitive in there. And it's just really a real simple process to do that, a simple technique. So see, in some ways, you know, when I was mentioning right here, this little crisp application of light separates this tree from the back one. But you can also do it with a really um, light, um, soft textures as well of light. And this is what I was mentioning too. You retain some of this white of your paper so that this lighting in here kind of makes sense because this is white ink that we're using. Okay, so let's let's push this um, tree right back in here, back in the distance a little bit, uh, a little bit more than it is right now because it's again it's stamped lighter, so it looks like it's farther back. But let's push it back a little bit more, like this, okay, like these two in the backgrounds, like that. See that right there? I put some up there, and there's a little bit like that, so it's going light, darker light, like that. You can do it over the whole thing too and see if you like it. I, I like to oscillate it though a lot. And these leaves up here, let's put some light in some of these leaves. Let's get a little blobby here. So, you know, so some of these leaves are in that light. Let's put my one that. Like a Q-tip might be better for like a real specific application. Okay, so it's not right there, the diffusion right there, but that's a little bit too much, so I'll dab some of it off like that. Okay, and uh, if you watch these before, you hear me say this a million times, but the white pigment ink dries darker because it's more see-through when it dries for some reason. So you, you apply a little bit more than what you think you're gonna need, okay? And, um, or you can just let it dry and see what it looks like. And then if you need to add more, then you just, you know, add more to it like that. Okay. 
So we have that little passage of light leading right up to our character. I was thinking about doing light beams in here. And if it was just this scene where it wasn't a reflection, I would do that. But sometimes in the uh, reflection cards, I, I'm not sure if, I, if I'd like a really strong beam of light uh, to be running in there. But I got this right here, like this, in a reflection card format. Like that, like so. All right. And final little touches in here. It's time for some leaves down in this area. Let me, okay, I haven't done this a lot, but okay, let me see right here. There's a couple down right here, here, and then don't add any over her face. <laughs> okay, I'll cluster them down around these rocks. All right. Let's see. Done with the white pigment ink, I think. And crafter's glue. And let's see. A couple different shades of uh, these little fake um, modeler's leaves. Some are leaves, some are like crumbs. Okay. And we'll mix it with this. We'll get kind of a couple different shades of, uh, or intensities maybe. This one looks a little bit more earthy, like an olive and more varied. This one's more of your straight, kind of brighter toned. Actually, I don't want that many of that. I want less of this brighter one. I think uh, these are also darker. So I think the lighter ones are going to stand out against this silver, I think too. Yeah. Bluebells. I, I Sherita, if you look up stampscapes and then bluebells, I did um, a couple um, scenes where I did, you know, it's a depiction of a, like a bluebell um, layered forest floor. And those ones, I really like those ones. I need to do that again sometime. All right, let's see here. Um, my silver foil is really, really smudgy. I think I better take the, uh, the fingerprints off at this point in time. I'm just going to with a clean um, cotton ball. And I'll try to be careful about, you know, not smudging it up as much as I have been doing here with my handling. Maybe at this point in time, it'd be a good idea to go wash my hands off. You know, these aren't like the, you can see it's like, I, you know, these are like smudgy little finger, you know, fingers at this point in time. If I wasn't in live stream, I'd go wash my hands. <laughs> All right. All right, let's add some of these leaves down here. So just some crafter's glue and a dot of glue for each leaf that I'm adding in here. Okay. And I'm going to try to have this um, somewhat... Oh. Like varied a little bit. Let's just go with them. Oh, I don't know. Dozen. I don't know. 10, 11, 12 dots of glue like that. I have to add a little bit more down here for these um, leaves than I do for um, glitter. All right, I've just been using my um, scratch knife here, my little spear one. And I found that this works really well. Okay, let's get... So these are going to represent some leaves, of course, you know, falling off the trees, floating in the water. And I mean, this whole idea of these reflection cards is to represent this kind of three-dimensional, almost almost like a diorama um, look 
for um, a scene. So having these like actual like three dimensional leaves is, is fun to add in here. Um, okay, so if, if anyone's just joined, joined in, some people purchased um, Froggy Fresh. You're the one that showed that. Uh, I don't know if she, Froggy Fresh is still on here, but she had that um, the leaf um, punch, and they're really great because it's it's like the leaves are really small too. Um, but it has like these. This punch had like three different shapes of leaves, so you can punch out you know your own leaves too. Uh, of with any color of uh, you know paper you want. Okay, I only do like a certain number of these leaves at a time because um, uh, that glue will start to dry on me. I find. All right, so see those leaves right down in there, like so. Those are the background ones like that, but see how they kind of, see how they look against that reflection right down in there, like that. I really like that look right in there. All right, let's add some more. I like these leaves kind of clustered around my rocks, you know, like they would get you know, they're kind of floating around and they, um, you know, end up around the, uh, you know, the stationary objects in the water, like that. All right, something like that maybe? Yeah, we'll have an isolated one or two out here too. I went with more. Let me see if I can get it all in this one, whatever, glue application here. Some of these um, leaves are like little crumbs almost, but I found that those little bits I thought worked pretty well um, the last time I was doing it because sometimes I'd want you know it looked started to look a little repetitive so if you just have like a little crumb in there too I thought that it um, that little shape like this is like a little just a little crumb of a, a piece of that leaf but that works pretty good just so everything isn't just exactly the same And some of these leaves too, they're, they're a little bit more, they're a little too three dimensional, so I can't use them. Or it's hard to, you know, adhere it, I guess. Yeah, this leaf would be a little bit too big right there. there. Yeah, so see right in here, I'm just gonna use a little crumb, like right in that, Maybe you can't even see it. See those two leaves right there? I'm putting this leaf here. I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to be covering um, my figure's face. Uh, the reflection of her face, I should say. All right, that glue is drying fast, so I'm trying to work fast here. So this is going to create a little bit of a three-dimensional um, element into this. So if I'm mailing this card to someone, I'm probably putting something over this piece right here as I fold the card, you know, for, you know, as it's in transit to someone. 
I, a piece of paper would probably be fine. Because I don't want these leaves to be, like, you know, I don't know. I don't, maybe they wouldn't dent the top uh, scene, but, um, I don't know. I just think a little bit of protection would help. I have all these leaves in the water. I guess you can put some on top of the rock, too, and that might be kind of cool. All right, I need, I need another crumb here. I don't know. Maybe there's this smaller one. It's like a darker leaf. All right, did it? No, there we go. Some of these leaves are really dark. It's kind of nice. So. All right, so that's what that looks like right there. It looks really bizarre. <laughs> I kind of out of context. But let's see what these look like right here. Like that. Yeah, it's like a, I think it's pretty fun. I don't know if I went overboard with those leaves or not, but um, I don't know. Overboard with, you know, some of those little blingy kind of, I don't know, it's not really bling, but um, those three-dimensional elements, I think it's kind of fun like that. He could prop potentially put a, like one or two, like at the base down here in the grasses, but I think I'm just going to leave them down in this reflected area like that and that'll be fine like about like so so anyways let these dry completely i found that um, when i've done these on top of the foil like this before and i've touched these the next day they were down there pretty firmly um, with this glue like this so but i am adding a little bit more of a a larger dot of the glue um, now um, after that initial one, but even with that smaller dot that I added down there, I kind of wiggled it around a little bit and they were pretty firmly affixed like that. I have a feeling that this um, glue kind of, it permeates this, these are little fake paper flowers. So I think when I first lay it down like that, sometimes it was like, you know, when I, you know, when I lift this off, it's, you know, the, the leaf is coming off with it. But I, I think what's happened is um, as this dries and adheres to the surface, it's also permeating these leaves right in here. So it's making a stronger bond with them, which is good. Oh, there's one little drop of glue right out here. And let's add one more leaf out that way. And this should be done. Um, the thing that I'm going to um use for this in terms of adhesive is a spray adhesive i'm going to use a spray adhesive on the back of this and then when you lay this down in here you want to fold this like this and just lay this right up in there like that and then just lightly dab it down like that and then what i'll do is i'll just lightly kind of press down in these areas kind of avoiding those leaves and that'll add um, that lower section down fine and then I do the top section or you can do you know you can do the top section first but I just do one at a time like that and I like the spray adhesive on this one too more than my tape runner the tape runner when I do um, this is it's not super thick like this but I find even with this lower section like this on the cards this size I find that um, the spray adhesive works a little bit better for me because sometimes you know when this is sitting around for a little bit if I use it to tape runner on it I don't know humidity changes time of year or something like that but I find that there might be a little bit of a, a ripple or something like that in the components of a card sometimes if I don't use enough um, tape maybe to I don't know but um, I don't know. The spray adhesive works really great. And you can get, you know, hundreds of cards out of one can too. So um, like the 3M Super 77 works really good. It's just a general all around spray adhesive. All right. Anyway, that is the card like that. It's our little, I see these as like little kind of pseudo, I don't know about pseudo, but it's, to me, they remind me of a little bit of a, it's like a little diorama in a way and i do like this car just you know this scene just as is like this i think it works just fine as just a card in itself but 
just with this little bit of work down here, it's just a few impressions of uh, stays on. And even if I didn't add the leaves in there, which I didn't wasn't doing, you know, until whatever, a couple weeks ago when I got those leaves and tried them out, I think just that, that little bit of effort down here with a few impressions on this lower section like this, it can really um, add that whole new dimension to an otherwise, you know, two-dimensional card, you know, giving it this three-dimensional type of look. You know, this is like a regular card, you know, you send it to someone, it just pops up. I put like a quote stamp right here, probably, um, or something like that. Or if you have a leaf stamp, you know, you can stamp, you know, a couple of those things. Right this would be kind of cool if you just had like one word or something like that. Or, yeah, like one word and like a leaf or two like that. And if they open it up like that, that would be kind of cool. It's a visual lead in, you know, for something to come. I don't know what your word stamp would be. Happy St. Patrick's Day or something like that. They would open up this. I think that makes for a pretty cool kind of presentation and opening. You know, because you have light kind of reflecting in here. And when they're opening it up, it's like, you know, you got light coming from within the card too. So and it's kind of fun too. And it looks, you know, the top scene looks different too, depending on, uh, you know, the lighting that's on there too, in some ways. It kind of brings it to life like that. See how it's a little bit darker like that. And watch this mist right in here kind of get lighter because as you open this up you have light reflecting off of this and right up in there it kind of brings those that mist to life you know it's a real subtle thing but you know you know kind of a fun thing to uh you know fun little additional dynamic you know what i mean that you're just adding to a scene i think this bottom portion right here could be cool in the uh, the gold foil as well um but i wanted to go silver on this one i, I wanted to um just keep it more pure green um, in this one. But I, I think the gold would look cool too. Um, but I've just been doing so much gold. I just wanted a, a little bit of a, a different, um, uh, whatever reflection card right here. So anyway. So 45 degree angle kind of presentation. Some people keep these up. Some people, some, someone came up with this presentation for their card too, of how to keep their card at a, like a 45 degree angle. I don't know if it was someone here in the chat, but um, um, I forgot what they did um, to do that. Um, I think they, I don't know, they posted in the Facebook uh, Stampscapes group too, so. Uh, you can check that out. Or if anyone is here that did that, you can mention how you did it. <laughs> if it could be described in written form. Uh, yeah, Ginger. Yeah, that mist really added that textural change. Nice textural kind of expansion on the entire piece, didn't it? And that's what I wanted. I want it real airy. This area right in here is a lot darker, but you got that light really reflecting back up into that. Huh. A brilliant ink too. Like I said, you can use other types of white pigment ink, but the brilliant ink has a little bit of that shimmer to it. So, um, a little bit of addition right there. Uh, yeah. So Linda, this was a fun one. So I was gonna do. I wanted to do a uh, a baby sea turtles piece. I've been thinking about that all week, and then I got to. I was pulling an order that had these trees in here and I was thinking about green anyway so I thought let's do a let's do a piece with the uh, the green you know and I've seen like photographs these images this mossy covered um, trunk image um, was based on um, a scene that I saw in a rainforest and the entire trunk all the way up here the entire things were green but I don't know if I've really done that before you know used them like that so i wanted to do it in this piece right here so and i thought let's just do it in a reflection card you know because a reflection card again it's like so easy to do or such an easy addition to a scene and i thought oh then i saw this i wasn't even thinking about these leaves either but right before i started the video i thought oh yeah there's, there's leaves in here so um and there's two different tones of them so that would really uh add to the entire whatever green theme so so you see like here so we saw the uh the different you know pads we've used um dye based ink greens you know um 
We used the um, acrylic paint pen greens, you know, and then we also went to tan and white, just like the other ones. But, you know, that you can call this a medium, I guess, you know, in terms of uh, adding the, these paper little elements like this. But here's greens right here. So it's just multimedia and you're just using, you know, the multimedia for the um, the aspect or the application of them that's that's most ideally for the uh, intended purpose. Uh, so these are really great for tiny little crisp little dots, you know. So you, you can use something like this, you know, the dye based things. You can get a pretty fast amount of coverage, you know, going over it like that, you know, with that. And then the colored pencils, you know, that coloring with a wadded up paper towel really isn't conducive for. You can use those you know, for specific areas of, you know, color and shadow or whatever. So just use, you know, whatever media um, you have that's going to suit your purpose. And if you're doing it in kind of a specific color schemes for objects or areas, you know, just use them accordingly. But um, don't get, you know, in other words, what I'm getting is don't get stuck into, okay, this is going to be my alcohol marker piece. You know what I mean? If a uh, colored pencils, you know, can add to whatever you're doing or whatever, you know, just add them in there. And uh, if you're kind of curious about, you know, the colors to do, you know, use, I just use them in theme. So, um, I don't know, it makes it easy. In other words, you can have two different zones of color, you know, you know, different colors completely. But uh, again, you know, you most people have all these things too. You have colored pencils. Um, I didn't use alcohol markers in here, but you could have. I could still come in here in the shadow areas or something like that. You can add in, you know, uh, more glazed kind of layers of a uh, tone in there, and that would be really really fun. Okay, so um, going forward, you know, that's the way. You know, spray adhesive is the way that I'll adhere these two pieces into this. This top part area right in here, I don't have to um, spray seal this right up here if I don't want to because everything is adhered and really stuck to there just fine. I don't really need to spray seal this bottom piece either. Um, so I'm not going to because of anything that you spray down here, it's going to kind of mute that mirrored reflective aspect of it. And you can see it's already not, you know, a perfect mirror anyways it's already muted a little bit but you know if you want it a little bit more misty or something like that you could do that and spray seal but again you don't need to spray seal that you know um, stays on ink on that paper but okay but this top portion right here i think i'm going to spray it with a a workable fixative um just to kind of get a little bit of a coating over the top of it for a little bit of protection but it also kind of unifies um, that. It's already kind of unified pretty good, but I think it'll make my saturations of ink like right in here a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, darker in the darks. So I'll get a little bit more contrast and you can see, see this where this is dried. It's dried kind of muted a little bit, but a little bit of a um, workable fixative in there will kind of um, increase that contrast to where it looked more like, um, you know, like a freshly inked up or stamped object, you know, in black ink. Okay. Um, but it won't change the rest of it, you know, too much at all, uh, because it's, you know, it, the workable fixative is really thin and it dries really fast. So, um, but again, from a textural standpoint, it kind of unifies as well, you know, because we have a lot of different textures in there. All right, folks, let's see. Did anyone ask any questions or anything like that? Um, add a little wax to your tool to grab the tiny pieces. Good idea there. Um, yeah, they have that for like glitter, I found. This works really good too. The, um, the jewel picker, I found that worked pretty good. But when I was doing it the first time, I found that this little speary type of one for me worked the best because it comes to this really fine little point like a needle so when i would drop down and i lift up like that it wasn't sticking to this as much um yeah with that one but i noticed yeah those um 
like the glitters come with that white wax pencil, you know. I had to ask someone what that was for. They said, I think it's to pick up your, you know, your glitter. Or your, no, it was with the, um, with the rhinestone, the crystal rhinestones. Um, it came with that. Uh, you do have the talent, Jeannie. I could walk anyone through this. Now, I, I went extreme up there with that coloring like that, but this is all easy stuff, you know. It's okay. So the things that kind of get confusing for people sometimes, it's like the the white pigment ink, okay. And I'll tell you what it is. It's it's adding um, it's adding too much of this white pigment ink down. That's like of all the techniques that were used in here. You know, people don't have a problem with like coloring with colored pencils or adding you know just tones down with like dye based inks, but it's when they start using this white pigment ink in here and it's just a simple matter of um they just have too much white pigment ink on their cotton ball and it's adding these big applications of thick white into there i've almost added when i look at this in some ways with this reflection coming off there i've almost added in too much white but that spray sealing in here it's going to knock it back slightly though too but it's just that's the part that uh i would if I was teaching this card and I was, you know, working people through like a workshop and going step by step, I would really make sure that they just don't have, an, you know, like way too much white pigment ink on their cotton ball. And if they don't, then there's no problem, you know, they'll use it accordingly. But if people see this like in the finished piece and I say, oh, it was white pigment ink, inevitably they go in with their white cotton ball into a really thickly inked up um, pad because a lot of people don't use their white pigment ink pads very often, so they're really super juicy. And then it's just blah, blah, blah. And they think, hey, wait, you know, uh, this isn't easy at all. But it's because there's 10 times too much ink in that white, uh, you know, in the cotton ball or something like that. Oh, yeah, I was thinking about adding in these little glowing orbs. But I, I don't think I'm going to do that on this one. I think I like that as is. If anything, I'd add like a couple like right in here. Like those little... But I do that like on all of my forest pieces. Uh, I don't know. All the time. I guess with these leaves down here, I'll, that'll be the uh, kind of the, uh, the three dimensional uh, part of this scene, you know, or three dimensional look. Um, but yeah, just don't use too much white pigment ink and all's well. <laughs> okay, let's see. Three months. You gotta start trying to you gotta try stamping sitting down, Jeannie. See what comes up, you know. Go you can do your um op art uh pieces, you know, it's just the black ink and those uh different uh, patterns or something like that. You gotta do that sometime. People might uh might freak out with that uh kind of uh um kind of pop art uh, style of uh imagery stamping. But that would be going back like what, like two decades, huh? Or something like that. Bunnies and Easter eggs. You can do that right in there. You take out that person right there and put a little Easter bunny in here and then put uh, like Easter eggs. You, you know, it'd be cool. You do an Easter egg um, horizon card like this. So this whole area down here is not the mirrored foil, but you do um, another piece of uh, cardstock down here. So this represents um, like a grassy meadow out this way. You can have these rocks in here too, the same way, but just do it in white. And it would be fun, you know, or put a little kid in here with an Easter basket. But then you have like all the eggs out here, like hidden, you know, in the rocks or something like that. You know, little Easter egg stamp, or if you have like a, like a punch or something like that. I don't think that they exist though, right? Like a punch the size of a hole punch, but it's in the shape of like an Easter egg. Um, that would be kind of fun too. Or you can, do, you know, um, kind of rip like an Easter egg in half too, and you can have it down here in the grass. It's like it's sticking out of the grass. I, mean, I think it'd be fun to have like a little, I don't know if I'd do it. I'd have it lighter up here, you know, but if you had like a little kid or a bunny rabbit down here, but you had like the Easter eggs kind of hidden down here, like a little Easter egg hunt, I think that'd be fun. We're gonna have to try that uh, Easter, uh, Easter, Easter egg uh, um, hunt 
challenge in the Stampscapes, uh, in the Facebook group, uh, Linda. <laughs> but that'd be fun to, like, hide little things in here, you know, uh, in the whatever type of scenario. I think that'd be kind of fun. Hmm. All right. I don't know. Thinking about it now. All right, folks. Thanks for checking out the live stream. Hope you you liked uh, what I call this um, a rain forest rainforest reflections. Had fun with this one. Always love those little leaves too, like that, those little three-dimensional elements in here. One of these days we're gonna get uh, kind of creative too and go with like, um, I don't, probably couldn't do it like this, but like little reindeer moss or something like that. Maybe just on a straight card or maybe like in a shadow box type of thing. Maybe we'd have to make this some kind of construction with a foam core or something like that. But then you put that little reindeer moss in the the corners like that, you know, for a like a like a little diorama looking piece, or shadow box or something like that would be cool. All right, folks, have a great rest of night and uh, weekend. Thanks again for joining in.